This is another episode of Happy and Hell. Uh, I do make these episodes um, every once in a while. It's based upon a teaching by Stuart Wilde. And uh, Stuart Wilde uh, agreed that we do live in a kind of prison planet here on planet Earth. He talks about it a lot in his books. And uh, one of his teachings was, despite the fact you're living in hell, you got to do your best to um, be happy. So how do you be happy and how and um, the answer is it's it's very um, you can't put it in words the way you be happy in hell is it's it's a phony teaching you really don't get happy in hell you don't you don't so it's but it's kind of to alert you that uh, if you are actively participating in this world then um, you're not really developed yet. Because if you are being anything other than the silent witness, which I talk about as being the silent awareness that you can discover through sitting quietly, perhaps with your eyes closed, and watching all of the things arise in mind, but that awareness itself is not doing anything some people say well you can fuse it with the external body and things but no that's um i can't see how you do it sometimes it might seem like that and a lot of you people who have never meditated and discovered the silent witness uh that you actually are and the great i keep talking about it the maya m-a-y-a which is the great illusion that you're doing something in this 3d reality so, if you have to realize the silent witness up here that seems to be doing everything until you sit quietly and um, meditate and watch what's going on inside your body, inside your thoughts, um, until you get that piece, then uh, you are participating in this world because you haven't made a distinction between you and this thing that's attached to you, this physical mind body thing that's attached to you where that supplies you with the things that you're aware of and this physical brain that you said well i got a brain no you don't if you're the silent awareness uh don't consider your brain to be part of your silent work nothing physical non-physical what about if I get knocked out and I can't... Well, then you don't have the ability to use this body to sense this world and you're knocked out. Uh, so, what does it sound like? Well, it sounds like you as awareness have to have something to supply you with something. Because if you're knocked out and you're supplied with nothing, then nothing... You're not even conscious. So, does it imply that perhaps the mind uh, does need the body? Uh, you can keep going around in circles and circles and circles on this. In the end, I'm going to keep telling you that consciousness is independent of the body. And someone says, if I'm wrong, well, if I'm wrong, um, I'm still not wrong, though. I'm still not wrong. Because I always give you this thing that um, it's... I don't know. Go the other way next time. Okay, then the next time we're going to say everything is created by your uh, so-called physical brain. That I can't seem to get through this problem with quantum physics that keeps talking about, you know, things that are physical are all empty space. And it's, like, very difficult. So how can, you know, a physical thing that appears physical to us, to our physical sense, senses, um, be physical in a quantum soup? What came first, the quantum soup or your brain? Anyone would say the quantum soup came first before the physical animal, before the species arose and before you were born. Quantum soup comes first. And where did the brain come? It had to come out of the quantum soup. So the quantum world must have come first. And as I said many times before, if you're thinking about having something built like a new house, first thing you got to do is have uh, thoughts about 
what you want the house to look like. And you got to get them all jotted down by an architect who can give the blueprints to the builder to build your house. So what came first? All these ideas and choices up here in your brain, so-called brain. So the thoughts come first. The thoughts come before the physical manifestations. Has to be that way if you're using cause and effect. If you're not using cause and effect, uh, then there's a multiplicity of factors that lead to this particular play in consciousness.